Over the last few years, there has been a trend. An FBI tactical unit in body armor raided a home in southern Massachusetts, and they marched our little gamer friend outside in a pair of shorts. Classified military information has leaked on the forums for vehicular combat simulator War Thunder for the third time. Online friends, and he says a leaker posted hundreds of pages of photos of classified US intelligence in a private group on Discord. And it's a trend of gamers leaking sensitive military and government documents. Now, it's pretty obvious majority of gamers are harmless and are never in the position to be able to leak classified documents and information. <laughs> I mean, most gamers can't even figure out how to shower or touch grass. So why are gamers doing this? And what are some of the biggest and most controversial leaks gamers have caused so far? Let's find out together. Why do people leak government secrets? Short answer is, leakers all have their own varying reasons to leak classified information. Some have seen war crimes committed by their country and want them to be held accountable. Others had proof that the US government was massively violating their citizens' rights and freedoms by using the internet and technology to listen and spy on everyone without a warrant. And then there are the few people who believe that Apple is actually going to release a new innovating phone this year. Nah, I'm, I'm just messing with you. This guy just wanted clout on his racist Discord server. And his actions led him to being one of the biggest government secret leakers of all time, as well as putting hundreds, if not thousands of people's lives at stake. So how secret is secret? Classification schemes can vary greatly from country to country, but for the most part, they tend to follow the four level rule. For example, NATO has four levels. NATO Restricted, NR, NATO Confidential, NC, NATO Secret, NS, and Cosmic Top Secret, or for short, CTS. Which classification levels, those have cool names for sure, but what do they mean? Well, information is ranked based on the perceived damage it can do to a government. At the lowest level of the system, Restricted. Restricted won't necessarily cause damage to a government or project, but still should not be handed out. Think of a flight manual for a 60-year-old fighter plane. Second is confidential. Confidential could cause some damage if known. Third, secret. Secret will cause a decent amount of damage if known. Fourth, top secret. Top secret will most certainly cause exceptional damage if let known. Interestingly, the US, with all of its special programs and military secrets, only has three standard levels of document confidentiality, those being confidential, secret, and top secret. Anything above these gets really tricky and is compartmentalized to the point that no one knows what project they're truly working on or who their true boss is. And for the sake of this video not being a five hour long video, I'm just gonna leave it at that. During World War II, the US actually had four standard confidentiality levels, but President Barack Obama eliminated the restricted classification in 2009 with an executive order. Now that I've given you a foundation in what classification systems are and how they're ranked, we can now get into the details. In the last year, everyone and their grandmother has probably heard about a single Discord server called Thug Shaker Central. Thug Shaker, and the person behind it, inadvertently triggered one of the most significant sensitive information leaks in recent history, impacting not only the US military, but also exposing critical data about some of our most vulnerable allies, like Ukraine. And after many hours of research, interviews, and my own brand of shoddy journalism, I believe I've put together a distilled timeline of events of not only how Thug Shaker was created, but also how and why the person behind Thug Shaker chose to upload so many secret documents that the Pentagon made it their personal mission to track down this gamer personally. So here's how it happened. Uh, allegedly, he still hasn't been to court. Okay, so according to a couple newspaper outlets, the creation of the Thug Shaker Central Discord server started with a YouTuber named Oxide. Now, Oxide's channel is built around military equipment, military vehicles, and guns. And he's a successful YouTuber. He currently has 193,000 subscribers, and there are no signs of him slowing down. 
Back in 2020, as Oxide's channel grew, he created a Discord server to host a community that watches his videos and shares the same passion for military content and gaming. Sources such as the Washington Post kind of imply that Oxide and his channel's Discord server was the first purposeful step into the creation of Thug Shaker, as if he had some intentional hand in building the Thug Shaker Discord server. But after talking to Oxide personally, I could not disagree more with the Washington Post, honestly. Unfortunately, when you are a popular content creator, you are open to the public, and you will find yourself reeling in anyone who watches YouTube, ranging from generally great people on one side to sexist, racist people and all around bad people on the other. Oxide not wanting to be a safe harbor for people like this, he instructed his mods to ban anyone who posted racist or horrible content on his Discord, like any respectable creator should, in my opinion. How do I know this? I just talked to Oxide. Here's what Oxide had to say during our conversation. I didn't want racist assholes in my community, so I started having my mods ban people, including him. In response, they started posting thug shaker memes on many channels, so I had to ban a lot of other folks. I thought nothing of it until the leaks happened and I got implicated somehow. According to old logs, he was banned three years back. So what happened is Oxide's Discord server purged a bunch of racists and now that they couldn't use his server as a racist or sexist home anymore, they were lost. Without a home, a user going by the name OG created the infamous Discord server named as Thug Shaker Central, where he and a few refugees from Oxide's Discord could talk about guns, gaming, conspiracy theories, and eventually, top secret leaks. But the leaks didn't start immediately. Things were relatively silent for a few years. Well, if you count racist memes, gaming, and guns as silent. In the summer of 2022, a few months after Russia first invaded Ukraine, a user going by the name OG started leaking information by hand typing up classified documents to be shared with his friends on Thugshaker. According to interviews from people who were in Thug Shaker at the beginning of the leaks, didn't really care or interact with his leaks that much. I mean, I guess since they were typed out versions of the documents and information, people reading his rants believed it was just an unhinged racist gamer who liked to write stories. This is where instead of giving up on leaking top secret information, OG made the conscious decision to double down and get even riskier with leaking documents. OG began just taking pictures of the documents at home and then uploading them to Thug Shaker. They weren't disguised either. The documents uploaded had clear as day, top secret or confidential written on them. This switch from transcriptions to pictures of the documents is where people and Thug Shaker really started to pay attention. It's like discovering that your drunken uncle at the Thanksgiving table in 2019 was right in his wild rants about a mysterious virus coming out of China that could potentially shut down the world, which is kind of a first for you. At some point in the February of 2023, an unknown teenager who was part of another YouTuber's Discord server named Wow Mao went on to publish highly sensitive documents detailing Ukraine's defenses and the US military's intelligence systems within Russia's military. Where did this unknown teen get these documents? Thug Shaker, apparently. And this is where shit goes bananas. After being posted to Wow Mao's server, the information spreads like wildfire. The leaked documents are then copied and shared from one Discord to another, bouncing back and forth between friend groups all over Twitter, Telegram, and Facebook. You name the social media, it was probably being posted there. It got spread so far, it started showing up on dedicated Minecraft Discord servers. One such Discord server was called Minecraft Earth, a fascinating project where they rebuilt the entire Earth and all of its cities in Minecraft using NASA satellite images. While I was looking at this Minecraft server, I was curious what on this server had to do with top secret military documents. Like, why was this even mentioned? Come to find out, nothing at all. Two randoms were just having an argument on the Russian-Ukraine war, and one person just said, here, have some leaked documents, and then proceeded to 
dump some of the classified information that had spread from Thug Shaker. The Minecraft Discord server leaks caused the wildfire spread of Thug Shaker's leaked documents from wildfire to supersonic speeds across the internet, finding its way to be an official source of information for a pro-Russian telegram group named Donbass Girl. Which come to find out, this pro-Russian telegram group is actually ran by a former Navy officer that's being investigated by the federal government, <laughs> which is just hysterical. OG, the admin and main leaker of Thug Shaker, seeing the leaks he caused spread far and wide on the internet, made him go into a panic mode. And on April 6, 2023, in a desperate attempt to hide what he did from the giant encroaching guillotine that is Uncle Sam's gigantic and what some would refer as and describe teethy cock, deleted the Thug Shaker Discord server. And I'm guessing you know what happened shortly after. Today, the Justice Department arrested Jack Douglas to Shara in connection with an investigation into alleged unauthorized removal, retention, and transmission of classified national defense information. Jack, a 20-year-old Air National Guardsman, was arrested on April 13th, 2023 at his mom's house after being found to be the sole reliable source of all the classified leaked information. Jack was OG. Now, I can hear you asking, why did an Air National Guardsman have access to top secret documents? Aren't National Guardsmen just low-level reserves? Apparently, not all the time, Jack was a technology support officer, so he had to have clearance to work on the systems for our military. Turns out, just because Jack had the clearance to work on these systems, it doesn't necessarily mean he should be looking at the secret information to begin with. According to an assistant US attorney, Jason Casey, Jack was told to stop doing deep dives and taking notes on classified information by his superiors not once, but twice once in September and again in October of 2022, according to his indictment. So if he wasn't supposed to be reading these documents at all and people were already keeping an eye on him, how was Jack, a low-ranking tech support officer, able to continue retrieving and leaking information? Did he descend into the top secret vaults like Tom Cruise fueled by cocaine and the willpower of Scientology? No, as it turns out, Jack using his secret clearance would access a secure classified area where cell phones were not allowed and retrieve the documents he wanted from the government's computers. Jack, after printing or writing out the classified documents, still had one big issue. Remember, he was still in a secure facility, so that means he still had to get past the guards at the front door without alerting them. So how did he do it? Turns out he would just crumple up the documents and put them in Ziploc bags or surround them with various objects like Ziploc bags, folders, his book sack, and just walk on by acting completely natural. Which, to be honest, is like the same energy as wearing a hard hat, high visibility vest, and carrying a ladder with you into the movie theater, hoping to get free movie tickets. And it somehow works. After Jack returned to his mom's house, he would either transcribe the notes by hand or simply just take a photo with his phone and upload them directly to Discord. Jack allegedly did this for a mind-boggling 300 plus documents. And because of this, he is recognized as one of the most prolific leakers in recent US military history. Hey, wait, wait, where are you going? You thought gamers were done leaking things? No, 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 we still have so, so much more to talk about. Now is the time I tell you about the most unshowered fan base I have ever- <laughs> War Thunder is a controversial multiplayer military vehicle combat game. It has a massive beloved fan base that stands by it as being one of the most accurate, but oddly at the same time, not accurate military vehicle war simulators of all time. Gaijin Entertainment, the developers of War Thunder, take great pride in their goal to as legally as possible make every vehicle in their game as accurate as it can be. Down to how the vehicle flies, sails, drives, detects enemies with their sensors, and even what weapons the vehicle has on it. And the cool part is, you can start playing all of this for free. As long as you're fine with microtransaction-based games, it isn't a bad game. So why is it controversial? 
The long story short, the game itself isn't what causes the controversy. It's the game's online forum that is the real culprit. War Thunder's forum is a place where players can discuss the game and connect for their mutual love for military vehicles. War Thunder players are notoriously very passionate about two things. Military vehicles, they love being the best, and the accuracy of the game. So what happens when two passionate military vehicle enthusiasts disagree on which vehicle is better than the other? Yeah, you probably guessed it right on the nose. They just start posting sensitive documents on the War Thunder forum to prove each other wrong. This isn't the only reason documents have been leaked by War Thunder players either. There have been cases in which the vehicle did not have the proper performance or a fan's favorite vehicle has not been added to the game yet, so forum posters thinking they can make it easier for Gaijin to develop or fix issues with the game, decide to leak sensitive documents of various current and modern military vehicles on the forum in hopes that the developers of War Thunder would see it and add or fix issues. Till this day of recording, there have been 30 restricted documents leaked on the War Thunder forum so far, with the earliest being dated back to July of 2021. Which that means over the past three years, the War Thunder forums have experienced a leak nearly every month. Which is just incredible, honestly. To try and curb these leaks, the moderators of the War Thunder forum have taken a very firm stance, stating that no classified or sensitive material will ever be used in the creation of their game. Anton Yutinov, the founder of Gaijin Entertainment, in an interview with the Washington Post said, We explain to users, War Thunder players, again and again, that it's pointless to give us any documents, sensitive information, that we cannot and won't use. Further along in the same interview, he can continues on to say, we delete the post and permanently ban those who break the rules. So our users know they risk everything, essentially for nothing. So in other words, don't post sensitive information on the War Thunder forum or anywhere on the internet for that matter. Unless that sensitive document is the mature romantic fan fiction about you and Sean Murray, the lead developer of No Man's Sky. If you know what I'm talking about, that is a great joke. But if not, here's a link for the Internet Historian video, which is just well worth your time. After hearing about these 30 leaks, I decided to do a little bit more digging because I wanted to know, were these leaks as bad as the media sources really said them to be? Not really. Most of the documents leaked on the forum could be found already leaked somewhere else before making its way to the War Thunder forums. For instance, two of the more popular War Thunder leaks were of the F-16 Fighting Falcon and the F-117A Nighthawk Stealth Fighter. The documents leaked on both of these planes were very old and declassified, but still had a restricted document status. Because of their restricted status, the documents on the F-16 and F-117 Nighthawk very much broke ITAR. ITAR, for those of you who don't know, is the International Traffic and Arms Regulation. This is a regulatory body that governs people from buying or trading military weapons or secrets to foreign people. And the reason why I bring this up is you can go to prison for decades and serve millions of dollars in restitution to the federal government for breaking this thing. Not to downplay either of these leaks of the stealth fighter or the F-16, but if you spend more than 10 minutes on Google, you can find some pretty in-depth information on both the Nighthawk and the F-16. And I'm sure if I can find it, those whose entire jobs revolve around digging up military secrets of their adversaries found it many years ago. With most leaks being rather benign, were there ever any truly secret leaks on War Thunder? <laughs> yeah, and I compiled the top two most interesting leaks to me. In the October of 2021, people in the War Thunder forums were arguing about the speed at which France's Leclerc battle tank's turret turns at. The turret, for those of you who are unfamiliar, is the part of the tank that has the large gun on it and spins, as seen here. One user going by the name Red Cross on the forum stated that they are a current crew member of a Leclerc tank squad. On the forum, Red Cross argued that some users of the War Thunder forum were incorrect about the turret's rotation speed, and that in the field, it was faster at turning the turret in real life than it was in the game. And instead of just letting the internet argument go, he did the most rational thing a War Thunder forum poster could do. Yeah, he took pictures of the tank's user manual and used it as proof to win an argument. 
Within hours of the documents being uploaded to the forum, moderators deleted his leaks and temporarily banned Red Cross for breaking terms of service. And this wasn't the only tank to have this treatment either. The Challenger 2 is another currently active duty tank that was developed and deployed by the British military. But unlike the Leclerc, it wasn't one of the Challenger 2's crew members getting in the argument online that caused the leak. Supposedly the leaker claimed to be a commander in the UK military. Not just any commander either. He also claimed to be a commander out of the Tidworth garrison in Wiltshire, which supposedly is where the Challenger 2 tank was developed. Now, whether any of this is true or not, I have no clue. Regardless, he leaked the Army Equipment Support Publication, or the AESP, which is like the support manual for British tanks and vehicles. So why did he do it? He did it to inform War Thunder's developers about the inaccuracies in the Challenger's dashboard components and was arguing to get them to fix it. And what's crazy, no one prompted him to do it either. He was just playing the game one day and said, yeah, I definitely need to leak this classified information online. Just like before, forum moderators jumped on it and suspended the account, as well as deleted the classified files from the acclaimed commander. But the story gets a little bit more interesting from there. The documents that were leaked by the so-called commander had declassified stamps over them, as if the information had been removed from classification. But during talks with the UK Ministry of of defense, War Thunder developers discovered that the documents leaked by the supposed commander were not actually declassified and that those stamps were not recognized. So what happened to the royal commander? I have no idea. I have seen conflicting reports saying the person was reprimanded for his leaks and other reports saying that we have no idea who this person was or is. So my guess is as good as yours. Thank you everyone for sticking around to the end of my video. If you like the video and wanna see more, please subscribe. I have so much more content planned and in the works. By the way, part two of my nuclear video is coming soon. If you haven't seen part one yet, I encourage you to check it out. Thank you all for your love and support. I'm just so grateful to share a glimpse into this absurd world we live in. If you have any ideas for science topics I should deep dive into and research on next, please let me know in the comments below. Anyway, thank you all. Love you guys. Bye.